Can you tell it's moist outside? Look at this. My hair's all frizzy. So over here, you can see I've got uh, two of 2011 sitting right here. And I thought I would just do a little minor thing. I want to keep one with the router OS 6 on and I want to move one to router OS 7. So let's do that. And then I just want to do a side-by-side -side comparison. I thought that'd be kind of neat. I'm sure somebody else has done this already, but uh, whatever. Um, so first, uh, uh, and now if I connect to Roman on this one, I should be able to actually pull up the second one. There we go. Password is admin. All right, so here we go. Let's get down to the meat, the meat of things. Come on, Winbox, stop being stupid. I want to see if I can actually upgrade it from my uh, within. Can I? Ooh, I can. I can just choose the upgrade option. Download and install. There's no going back from there. I wonder if we're going to be able to do a, a proper B test on this thing. I'm curious. I wonder if it's actually going to increase performance at all. Hey, uh, are you going to, like, do your job, you stupid thing? Uh, let's see if there's an update. Apparently there is. <coughs> Man. Oh, there it's upgraded. Okay, cool. Here we go. Okay, let's go back over to this one. Can I open this one from here? Really? You gonna let me do that? Cool. I wonder how I was able to pick that up. Interesting. It must be in um, bridged mode. Apparently not. That's kind of cool. All right, so let's take a look at the first uh, set here. Let's take a look at interfaces. I don't see anything really different here. All right. Okay, interface list. So this stuff all looks the same. Oh, what's this? It's all sorts of neat stuff in here. Ethernet. Yeah. So these are two identical routers. These are both 2011s. Actually, let's, let's check something out here. Is EOIP set up exactly the same? I think all the routing is very different now. Yeah, EOIP sets up the same. Ah, VXLAN. Uh-huh. Isn't that interesting? We have VXLAN support on here. Interesting. I'm going to be honest with you guys because I'm not a liar. I've never even touched VXLAN yet. I'm a, a pretty straightforward type person. I mean, basically I do all the essential routing and switching with the addition of what's necessary for carriers, plus RF uh, troubleshooting and design and all that stuff. And I'm constantly learning. So that being said, VRF and LTE, interesting. There's a lot of things which I haven't done yet. And there's a lot of things I don't know. And that's why there's all sorts of awesome people out there that teach us all this stuff. I just try to make it entertaining for you guys as I learn it and hand it off. All right, I hope VLANs are still set up the same on here. Doop, doop, doop. Okay, good, that hasn't changed. All right, so no changes there. Switch, switch. Doesn't look like anything has changed there. Mesh. Oh, this has WireGuard on it too now, cool. WireGuard, so actually let me take a look at something here because this menu looks longer. So we've got WireGuard's new. Bridge is lower. I don't know why wireless is on here. This thing doesn't have any wireless interfaces. I usually don't install things I don't use. Actually, let's check something out. Ah, yeah, there's only one thing there. All right, IP. Yeah, it looks pretty much the same. IP address configures the same. Uh, MPLS. Oh, yeah, there's a lot more to that now. I got it. I see, because it's actually the LDP setup right here. All right, so we've now found the first thing. LDP instance is here rather than here. So you notice the difference there? Okay, so that's interesting. So there's our LDP instances now. Now let's look up our LDP interface. Doesn't look like that's really changed very much. It's almost starting to look a little bit like OSPF. It's almost like they fleshed it out or something. Uh, LDP neighbor. And, okay, this all looks the same though. So minor changes here. Remote mapping, interesting. So got a few extra tabs here actually. Neat. All right, what's this uh, local mapping? Yeah, okay, so this is all the VRF routing stuff. All right, let's check out OSPF now. That's one that really concerns me, actually. Oh, there's a lot of... Oh, no, never mind. Sorry, I'm on the wrong one. BGP, BFD, BGP filters, MME, OSPF, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's all there. Oh, there's a lot more stuff on this site. Well, first of all, let's take a look at BGP. Actually, the Network Berg did a proper intelligent video on router OS 7 BGP, by the way. Just to let you guys know. I'm not uh, any of my dribble. Ah, uh, new BGP connection... Wow, that's very different. So, uh, interesting. Very, so does that mean that the peers are actually done? So everything's done right in one? GP, AS, AFI, router ID. Interesting. 
So it looks like they've actually combined, they've combined these. Interesting. That might actually be a much smarter way to do it. Hmm. Very, very interesting. Okay, let's check out, check out the route filters now then. So I have a feeling that, uh, <coughs> yeah, look at this. Look at the difference in route filters. There's a lot more added here in routing. I mean, just looking at the BGP, the BGP is already a big difference. And by the way, don't forget, folks, you can always pause if you want to really scope something out. Let's check out the OSPF. So here's our OSPF here. OSPF here. At first glance, they look very similar. But there seems to be... So you're one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, interfaces, instances. It looks like instances are gone. Oh, wait, sorry, instances is right here, so I need to create my default instance. Let's pull this up and see what we got. Okay, so this is relying on... Yep, so this is all VRF instead. Looks like I gotta do some work on some VRF stuff. Okay, so this is IPv4, IPv6 support. It's all on one option now there. Good, good, okay. Okay, so that's our instances. Uh, our interfaces here. It looks like the interfaces dynamically propagate. Areas. Area ranges, static neighbors, and neighbors. So this is just very, very, very different. Okay, let's set this up. There we go. All the pieces fit together. NSSA and stub, interesting. So it looks like this is going to be far more dynamic in OSPF, uh, far less manual than it was previously on Router OS 6. Okay, so they've made it smarter. It's going to be interesting to try to integrate uh, version 7 with version 6. All right, what else we got? We've got some new stuff in here. We've got Him Sim. Do we? Yeah, yeah, we've got um, Him Sim. I don't even know what this is. Ooh, interesting. By the way, this is not an educational video today. I'm literally just poking around and checking out and doing comparison of these guys. Uh, what do we got in our system? Anything new? It's mainly the routing that's changed. Although, you know, one thing which I want to try right now is let's jump from 319 to 723. I'm sure there's a wiki entry somewhere that says it's a bad idea. So let's try that. Because I want to just see if there's any performance enhancements uh, from 6 to 7 to see if, like, maybe B-Test performs better. Because, I mean, like... They're talking about how on router OS 7, we'll be able to turn most of the Microtech layer 2 switches into layer 3 switches if they're 3 series. I am curious about that. I don't know if this is healthy or not, but it's pretty damn yummy. Okay, here we go. Are we back in? We're back in. I'm going to try doing a B test to my local router in the basement. Let's see what happens. I'm just curious. No. No, the 2011 is still a limited piece of garbage. Good for consumer level, though. They usually top at about 250. Yeah, that poor little CPU cannot keep up. Let's add a uh, DHCP client on here. Perfect. Okay. So we're topping at about 188, <laughs> just for shits and gigs. Oh, you know, no, that should work. Hold on. Oh, it's probably because I've already got a B test going. Is it? Oh, no. You know what I need to do? Check this out. Now I'm able to use both of them. Now, there we go. Now, <clears throat> my current 4011, which is about to be replaced by a little CHR server, should be able to handle two of these guys hitting it with no problems at all.
Is actually is six actually performing better? Let's try TCP on this. TCP is really heavy on the CPU. Yeah, well, that's an interesting comparison. So no firewall, I'm maxing out it now. All right, we're peaking at like 152-ish. Let me try a new instance. What happened? That's interesting. Because right now the 2011 running router OS 6 seems to be kicking the one with 7's ass. Let's try a UDP test. Five fifteen, five seventeen. Okay, let's try it on this one. That's very interesting. Uh, let's try that with TCP again. Only one test running. Very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. So I guess the, the 2011 has not been optimized yet for this thing. Uh, you know, I wonder if I can do something here. Hold on. More power. I'm gonna set this thing on fire. <laughs> yeah, thanks for humoring me on this nonsense video. I'm probably gonna like 40 views on it, by the way. I really, it's just something which I wanted to fiddle with because many of you guys are probably wondering this sort of stuff, right? Well, let's see how this performs now that I jacked it. Wow, that barely made any difference at all. It's just the actual capability of the CPU. It's the bulk uh, capacity that it's actually failing on. Actually, this is kind of interesting. I never noticed this before, look. That's really handy. Okay, MicroTik, that's cool. So we can actually see what the remote CPU load is now in the B test. That is awesome. Cause like, you're, you're always wondering, oh, am I maxing out the CPU on the other one? Unless you've got both the routers open, you can't tell. Um, this is awesome. Cause like, it does not have it here, look. That is a handy little feature. That's cool. Look right here, local CPU, remote. That's awesome. All right, what else changed? It's basically the whole routing section. Oh, I should take a look at the bridge too, actually. Nice that there's no millions of comments on here. Zap, that always annoyed me, the def conf. All right, so first of all, let's take a look at the ports. To me, that looks identical. Yeah, so really that hasn't changed at all. So it looks like the switching's still fairly identical. You know what? It's mainly so far just routing section. Uh, let's see IP services. That's still the same, cool. Oh yes, hold on, the, the VPN subsection. What do we got here? PPP, PPTP, S, uh, SSTP, L2TP, OpenVPN, PPPoE, which means IPsec. Okay, we got IPsec here. Um, so I'm not seeing a lot of major differences, to be honest. It's basically just the routing subsection that's like extremely different, plus the addition of WireGuard here. I'm not even going to touch IPv6 on here because I honestly, I'll admittedly say I know nothing about IPv6 yet. Uh, it is on my roadmap to learn, but I got to basically know what you guys need to know and what you guys need to know in the future. So I got to stay a few steps ahead of you guys, right? So I just focus on getting really, really good on the stuff that we actually need to do and try to learn the additional things as we go. And of course, whenever I start doing learning vendors, I typically go through uh, Rick Frey Consulting or MITS Co. with Manny Restana. And um, they're, they're my trainers. And then I've also worked with um, Hanny in Toronto, actually, Wireless Netware. Um, he's a Microtech trainer in Toronto. So if you guys are in a Toronto area, um, you can contact Wireless Netware and he does Microtech training and certification. Um, MITS Co. is actually located in uh, uh, Istanbul. And... Um, they actually move around, so like uh, their trainers actually travel all across continental Africa. And Rick Frey, of course, is in the States. So there's Canada, Hanny. There's, um, and by the way, Hanny, love you dearly. I honestly don't know how to pronounce your last name, so rather than me uh, say it wrong and look like a dum-dum, I'm just not gonna pronounce it. But Wireless Netware in Toronto for the Canadians who need training for Microtech. Rick Frey in the States, and of course, uh, MITS Co. Um, if you're abroad, overseas. So there you go. There's my shout outs to all you guys. All right, so I mean, I'm not seeing a ton of differences here. This routing subsection is basically where everything's really very different. That's gonna take some studying. I think I, in the back of my head, I think I've already figured out how the OSPF and that works on here and how the BGP works. They've just 
collated everything into a, a single tab, I guess you could say. So you would set up most of the settings um, required for each peering. Basically, each peering is con uh, contained when it, within its own little section, rather than having generalized global settings that are relied on by all the um, different peers. But I could be completely wrong. So yeah, we're at 32 minutes now. So I mean, ah, I've poked around. If you guys want, I mean, like, uh, I've got no problems doing some side-by-side -side testing for other things if you guys want for this. Um, it might be a good idea. Like, uh, comments below and tell me what do you guys want to see me do with Router OS 7. And, of course, thanks to all of our Patreons for keeping us alive and feeding us, because without you guys, we'd be dead. <laughs> well, maybe not dead, but the channel wouldn't be doing anything, really. So thanks, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe, come comment below, join our Patreon, join the Facebook, join our Instagram, join our Discord, join our Twitter, Twitter, join our YouTube channel. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm.